Hey, hey, where's your tie? No, I didn't. That's a fine way for a millionaire to be running around, uh, hoping at the neck. Have you got garters? Of course I have garters. Here. Oh, they've taken my garters, too. A likely story. Turning collegiate army, eh? Have you got socks? Certainly. Here they are. So I... you have. You have got socks. They look pretty old to me, too. Whose are they? Uh, well, old socks, let me introduce myself. My name is Spalding, Captain Spalding. I am Roscoe W. Chandler. Well, this is a treat, your treat. You have uh, heard about me? Yes, I've heard about you for a great many years, Mr. Chandler, and I'm getting pretty darn sick of it, too. <laughs> Quite naturally, I have also heard of the great Captain Spalding. Well, that's fine. I've heard of you and you've heard of me. Now, have you ever heard the one about the two Irishmen? Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, now that I've got you in hysterics, let's get down to business. My name is Spaulding, Captain Spaulding. I am Roscoe W. Chandler. And I am Jeffrey T. Spaulding. I bet you don't know what the T stands for. Uh, Thomas? Edgar. You were close, though. You were close, though, and you still are, I'll bet. Now, this is what I want to talk to you about, Mr. Chandler. How would you like to finance a scientific expedition? Well, that is a question. Yes, that is a question. You certainly know a question when you see it. I congratulate you, Mr. Chandler. And that brings us right back to where we were. How would you like to finance a scientific expedition? Well, is there any particular kind of an expedition you had in mind? Well, I'll tell you, I'm getting along in years now, and there's one thing that I've always wanted to do before I quit. What is that? Retire. Now, would you be interested in a proposition of that kind? You know, I've always had an idea that my retirement would be the greatest contribution to science that the world has ever known. This is your chance, Mr. Chandler, when I think what you have done for this country. And by the way, what have you done for this country? Oh, well, I've always tried to do what I could, especially in the world of art. Art. Well, I don't know how we drifted around to that, but what is your opinion of art? I am very glad you asked me. I would draw the I... question. This fellow takes things seriously. It isn't safe to ask him a simple question. Tell me, Mr. Chandler, where are you planning on putting your new opera house? Oh, I thought I should like to put it somewhere near Central Park. I see. Why don't you put it right in Central Park? Could we do that? Sure, do it at night when no one is looking. Why don't you put it in the reservoir and get the whole thing over with? Of course, that might interfere with the water supply. But after all, we must remember that art is art. Still, on the other hand, water is water, isn't it? And east is east, and west is west. And if you take cranberries and stew them like applesauce, it tastes much more like prunes and rhubarb does. Now, uh, now you tell me what you know. Well, I, I would be very glad to give you my opinion. Well, that's dandy. I'll ask you for them someday. Remind me, will you? I'll tell you what. Could you come to my office at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning? If I'm not there, ask for Mr. Jamison. That's my secretary. And if he sees you, I'll discharge him. That's the date now, Saturday at 3. No, you better make it Tuesday. I'm going to Europe Monday. Pardon me. My name is Spaulding. I've always wanted to meet you, Mr. Chandler. Tell me, what do you think of the traffic problem? What do you think of the marriage problem? What do you think of at night when you go to bed, you beast? Well, I'll tell you, my dear... I'd rather not discuss it any further. Remember, there are children present. Well, you see, my dear Captain, in the last analysis, it is a question of money. The nickel today is not what it used to be ten years ago. Well, I'll go further now. I'll get off at the depot. The nickel today is not what it was 15 years ago. Do you know what this country needs today? What? A seven-cent nickel. Yes, sir. We've been using the pie cynic on this country since 1492. Now, that's pretty near 100 years, daylight saving. Now, why not give the seven cent nickel a chance? If that works out, next year we could have an eight cent nickel. Think what that would mean. You could go to a newsstand, buy a three cent newspaper, and get the same nickel back again. One nickel carefully used would last a family a lifetime. Captain Spaulding, I think that is a wonderful idea. You do, eh? Yes. Well, then there can't be much to it. Forget about it. Hell, <laughs> Well, tell me, Captain uh, Chandler. Uh, 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 excuse me, uh, Spaulding is Spalding. the name. Spaulding, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I'm Spaulding and you're Chandler. Yeah. Let's have no more of that either, eh? Oh. Bad enough being Spaulding. Well, tell me, Captain Spaulding. Uh, Spaulding is the name, That's yes? right, that's Spalding. right. Yes. I'm, I'm Chan. No, no. I'm Spaulding. Spaulding? Can I look at a program a minute? I might be the News Weekly, for all he knows, or coming next week. Well, tell me, Captain Spaulding. You've been quite a traveler. Uh, what do you think about South America? I'm going there soon, you know. Is that so? Where are you going? Uruguay. Well, you go Uruguay and I'll go mine. Say, how long has this been going on? Let's change the subject. Yes. Take the foreign situation. Take Abyssinia. Uh -huh. I'll tell you, you take Abyssinia and I'll take a hot butterscotch sundae on rye bread. Let's go and see what the boys in the back room oh, will have. But my dear